We're going to have a look at how to set up LiveDocs penalty profiles so that you can make better use of bilingual resources that you put into LiveDocs in MemoQ. To do that, we're going to go to the Tools menu, to the Resource Console, select LiveDocs Settings, and then with the default profile selected, we're going to click Edit. You can't actually edit the default profile, but doing so will allow you to make a copy of it. And we're going to name that profile General Live Doc Settings. Click OK. And now we'll edit it. Okay, there are quite a number of different kinds of penalties that you can apply in Live Docs. You can apply penalties for specific users. You can apply penalties for a particular corpus. I don't usually do that, but the most important settings for me are the match thresholds and then the penalties for row types. So let's take a look at what we've got here. A minimum match threshold of 60%. Okay, that looks pretty good but I usually like to have 85% as my good match threshold, particularly because I apply heavier penalties in live docs than I would to a TM. And then down below in the penalties for row types, we have two different categories. We have penalties that are related to alignments. That is when you have two separate documents where you align the sentences with each other and then bilingual documents, which would be things like XLIF files, SDL XLIFs from Trados, bilingual doc files, TTX files, and other types. For alignments, I like to penalize the automatic links more heavily than the default. So the 5% that they have by default, I would change to a 10% penalty and manual links, I like to penalize those because most of the time when I do alignments I like to check these segments more carefully and I don't want them to override anything in my TM. So I penalize even the ones that I've manually confirmed so that if there's something in my TM it will take precedence over that alignment. And I typically apply a 5% penalty. For bilingual documents, such as an SDL XLIF, I like to penalize the unconfirmed rows 15%. Confirmed rows, I'm going to penalize those 5% because it could be that I'm getting a translation that I'm supposed to proofread and I don't want this to have 100% match value until I've gone through and checked it. And for a proofread row, I'm going to apply no penalty. Okay, let's have a look at the second tab. All right, here, under the penalties for unfinished alignment documents, I'm going to reduce that to 5%. Okay, that's not so risky because I've increased the penalty that it gets applied to unconfirmed alignment rows. And if I've already confirmed the row, that means that it'll have a total penalty of 5% plus this 5% if I'm not done going through the whole document. So altogether, a 100% match for a confirmed row in an alignment will actually show as a 90% match in the translation window. And if I've got a difference in sublanguages, for example, if I've got a document that has British English instead of the American English that I usually use, I want to apply an additional 5% to that so that I can be a little bit more aware of the possibility that there may be spelling issues or differences in usage. Now I'm going to confirm this and I'm going to close the resource console. What we're looking at here is an SDL XLIF document that I have imported into my current project. 
and you may notice that this document has rows with various types of status. The first four rows, as a matter of fact, have all been confirmed. They were 100% matches. That's followed by a row that's a fuzzy match. Here we have a 100% match, but this particular row has been rejected. And here we have a 100% match by pre-translation, but it has not been confirmed. And then the rows underneath that have all been proofread. And if we look down a little bit further, we can see that there are also a couple of rows that haven't been translated at all. The rest appear to be proofread. Well, when I received this document, I didn't get a TM with it. And so I would like to be able to use this document as a reference while I translate so that it will show up when I do concordance searches, for example. I think that the best way to do this is to put this document into Live Docs. So I go back to the translations view on Project Home, make sure that the document's selected, and then I go down to this command, Add to LiveDocs Corpus. This project has a corpus named Poultry attached to it, and I'm going to place this document into that corpus right now on a temporary basis because later when I finish the translation, I'll want to archive the final translation in that corpus. And in order to make sure that I do not overlook this document later when I want to remove it, once I've completed the translation and want to put in the final version, I'm going to put the word temporary into the keywords. And I'll click OK. And that's all I have to do. Now let's go over to Live Docs for a moment. Down below here we can see the document that we just placed in there. But we want to go and apply the profile that we just created to this particular corpus. To do that, we go over to the settings. And here we see that the default settings are currently applied to this corpus. So now we're going to select the settings that we just created and click OK. And now those settings will apply when we're in our translation window working. So let's see what this means. Let's go up to the top of the file. And here, for example, we have a match that was 100% in Trados. But over on the right-hand side, you'll notice that this match is listed as 95%. This is because it's being looked up in the Live Docs corpus. This is also indicated by the icon in the translation results window. This row here, the fuzzy match row, is listed as an 85% match because we apply a 15% penalty to unconfirmed rows. That would also apply to the next two rows, which, although they are 100% matches, are unconfirmed so they'll show up as 85% matches with the Live Doc settings that we've chosen to use. The row below that, however, which has been proofread, will show up as 100, or in this particular case, 101% match, because Live Doc's matches also take into account context. So all of the further proofread rows will show up as 101% matches. This has advantages over writing to a TM, where all of the various rows that we had here would not be differentiated according to their row status. So if we were writing this content to a TM instead, we would only have the choice of putting everything in so that it would show up as 100% matches if we didn't apply a penalty to that TM, or we would have left out some of the content that we might in fact want to use. So using Live Docs gives us more flexibility in choosing how we want to apply the matches when we work.